Hey everyone, it's Ross, and um, today's video is going to be the perfect video for all of you guys who love apple trees and love, you know, backyard high density dwarf apple tree plantings. You know, this is perfect for anyone that's growing in a backyard orchard, right? Um, what we're doing here is we're, we're taking about 20 apple trees and we're putting those in the ground. We got 10 holes, and in each hole, though, is two trees. And I kind of want to show you guys how I did that and why I did it. This is really uh, pretty simple. It's a lot, largely inspired by Dave Wilson Nursery. They're the first people to really um, talk about this and really um, talk about the benefits of this kind of planting. And I did a video for you guys about four months ago on this topic and a lot of the pros and cons and um, showed you guys a lot of my trees, whether they're in the ground or in containers, you can also do it. So, bet you didn't know that, but you can also have more than one tree in the same container. Um, I've even been doing that with figs. I do that with all kinds of stone fruits and apples and pears, uh, you name it. So, um, it's certainly possible in containers and it's certainly possible here in the ground. Now, that's really important to know is that this is really only possible with dwarf or semi-dwarf apple trees, right? A lot of, uh, even orchards, not just backyard, orchards but commercial orchards do this kind of planting or something similar to this you know they have different systems in a more serious commercial setting but you know they'll do a similar thing like this with these dwarf apple trees and the whole idea behind it is that these trees really don't get all that big apple trees for the most part fruit on spurs you know some varieties will fruit on the ends of branches but most of them will fruit on spurs for you and because they fruit on spurs, you can kind of get rid of a lot of that excess growth and really control the vigor uh, with the dwarf rootstocks. Um, but it's not really the biggest, I'm not really the biggest fan of that. I don't really like dwarf trees in general. Um, here you're looking at my standard peaches in the ground that we've espied. Um, we've made a lot of mistakes as a, a new backyard orchardist. Uh, when we first started out, you're not even really supposed to Espaillé peaches, but I've done it and I've figured out a way to, you know, uh, make them fruit for me every year and have a good crop every year. But it's not something you're really supposed to do. And the same thing with apple trees is that I much of I would have much rathered, rathered. I would have much rather have um, a standard tree, one standard even, and then I can graft all these different varieties onto it. The difference between my dwarf apple trees that were in the ground, I had two different plantings. I had about seven trees in the ground um, in clumps, right? I had four in one and a three in one. But the difference between my espaillade peaches and the apples was just like astronomically different. And, you know, I know peaches fruit a little bit earlier, uh, but so do dwarf apple trees, right? That's part of it. Uh, you're supposed to get fruit at a much younger age, but even in three years, three years in the ground for the apples, three years in the ground for the peaches. The apples did flower, something happened to the lot of the fruit, but um, the amount of fruit that I was getting on the, the standard peaches compared to the dwarf apples was like astronomically different. I could certainly put in more espied standard peaches in the same area that I have uh, these dwarf apples, and I'm gonna get more yield. Uh, a lot of people will disagree with that, but so far with these dwarf apple trees, guys, I'm really not liking them. I'm not enjoying um, the fruits of my labor. You know, it's really been kind of a, a letdown. Um, you know, it may take a little bit longer for these guys to really set heavily, but um, in the end, the reason I'm telling you is this is because I would rather do it uh, a different way, right? I'd rather have a standard tree in the ground graft all those different varieties onto it you know we do have 20 we actually have about 25 varieties in this location even though there's 20 different trees we've grafted different varieties onto those so you know we can certainly achieve maybe a even higher diversity than um than just having one tree and grafting different varieties onto it but um you know again i don't want to harp on this too much but let's get back to kind of what we're doing here we've got you know, 10 different trees in the ground or 10 different holes in the ground. Uh, let's talk about spacing. So in each hole is two trees. 
between each hole is two feet and then in the hole itself we're kind of planting them like a v right you got one tree here and then one tree over here and we're planting them kind of like this so that if they do get a large caliper size which doesn't happen very quickly with dwarf apple trees it may not happen at all by the time i you know dig these trees up and move because i'm probably going to take these trees with me um when i do move out of this property but you know we don't want them kind of growing together right so we want to angle them off a little bit and a v is a really nice way i think of uh representing that uh, but those could be any as close as you want them you know if they're v'd off like this they can be right on top of each other uh, i've seen dave wilson nursery recommend about 18 inches um, I've seen other people recommend about a foot. It's really up to preference and it's really up to you. Um, between the rows though, because we've got two hedges, we've got a hedge in the front and a hedge in the back that's a little bit higher up on a berm, that's six feet away from uh, hole to hole. And the reason for that is because each tree in the hole is going to grow off in their separate direction, right? So if they're like this, this is going to grow out three feet and that's all i'm going to let it right we talked about this apple trees fruit on spurs they don't really need to get that big to put out a decent crop you know you need a certain number of leaves per fruit but you know i don't really need them to get that big so three feet's a good number and then that way if they're six feet apart i have them growing off you know six feet this way or three feet this way but also three feet this way and that way they're kind of get a little They'll probably get a little entangled there. So you'll probably see some crisscrossing branches. You know, we'll probably see some trees growing into each other. Um, you know, but that's what the annual pruning is for, right? We can correct this problem, no problem. If you know anything about pruning, it's a real easy fix. So, um, not the end of the world. And, and this is really how close I'm willing to get. Uh, I'm not really willing to get much closer than this. And a lot of people may even go closer depending on the the type of apple they're growing, right? There's some apples that are grown as columns, different types of systems they may use. We're basically gonna use one scaffold per tree and have that grow out three feet. You know, that's not too bad, right? So we talked about spacing. We talked about um, why I don't really like this. Let's talk about some other pitfalls. Uh, one other pitfall is that you know some of these guys can be a little bit more vigorous than others and you can correct that with pruning right you don't want one tree shading out the other one right you also kind of want to orientate them towards the sun you don't want to have them um, you know big trees in the front small trees in the back um, you know you really want to make sure that the more vigorous varieties are in the back maybe they're on a more vigorous rootstock we went through all these trees guys I graded them looked at their caliper size, looked at the uh, the length of the tree, looked at the root system, you know, and really gave a pretty good estimation as to how strong the tree is and kind of grouped those trees up together depending on how strong they were, right? Put the strong ones with the strong ones and then the strong ones are going to go in the back, right? Because the sun is actually straight ahead uh, in the morning and then it west is behind us and south is to our right. So that sun comes around we want to make sure in the in the back left corner of our screen that's where our stronger trees are that are going to be more vigorous they're going to get the most sun we already have kind of the help with that berm in the back right that second hedge back there is already on a berm that's quite high so uh, we've got that going for us but you know that's something really important to pay attention to obviously you can correct that with pruning but those are the biggest pitfalls i think is uh you know, not having this stuff on the same rootstock, you know, planting them uh, on a V or, you know, the right spacing and pruning, you know. Um, otherwise, you guys get, you know, some pretty good results with this, right? The Dave Wilson nursery style of planting this kind of thing is really uh, impressive and definitely a good way to do it. Um, I know I really knocked it down a peg there in the beginning of this video but you know there's a lot of success of ripening right you get all these different varieties that ripen one after another that way you don't have all these apples at one time you get a lot of pollinate uh, pollination that way with all these different flowers that bloom at different times um, 
And you know, you also just get a lot of genetic diversity, right? You also get a lot of interesting, really tasty apples. So um, I guess one of the other things I want to mention, we didn't go really that crazy with these holes. We didn't really dig all that deeply. Um, you know, the only thing I would recommend at this point, after you get these guys in the hole, you tamp them down, you water them pretty well. I'm showing you guys the sun right now, the orientation of the sun. Um, after that, just mulch the trees really heavily. Uh, it really changes the soil. These guys are pretty shallow rooted as dwarf, uh, dwarf apple trees. Any really great fertilizer or any excess mulch that you guys can put down at the time or every year on an annual basis, right? Do your pruning, put the prunings below the tree, unless it's uh, diseased in any way, you know, put a lot of that mulch down at the tree. That'll break down into compost, feed your trees, and you'll really have happy dwarf apple trees this way. And they'll be long, longer lived that way. So anyway, guys, that's pretty much the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this little, uh, you know, you know, kind of brought it home version of this, you know, rather than me going outside, trying to figure out exactly what it is I want to say as I'm filming is not really the, the most uh, easiest thing. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this little video here and I'll talk to y'all soon. Take care.